In this video, we will take a look at chapter 4 of the Watson text, where we cover one-to-many relationships. In a previous video, we discussed a single entity or a single table, but there are many occasions where there are several entities that need to be represented in a data model, and this data model might need to take the form of tables within a database. The first type of relationship that we want to learn about that can exist between two entities is known as a one-to-many relationship. In this case, on the slide in front of you, you see that a nation can have many stocks. There are two entities, a nation entity and a stock entity. The nation entity has a couple of attributes nation code, nation name, and exchange rate, and the stock entity has a couple of attributes, as you can see in front of you. A nation having many stocks implies that each stock belongs to a nation. A nation can have many stocks associated with it, or a stock belongs to a specific nation. These types of relationships are typically present in hierarchical relationships. Hierarchical relationships occur frequently within organizations and have multiple one-to-many relationships. A firm, for instance, can have many divisions. A division can have many departments and a department can have many sections. These are multiple one-to-many relationships that are existing between these entities. While we could try to put all of this data in a single entity, in a single table, but there are problems that are created when we do attempt to do that. In the example of stock and nation, for instance, we could have the following structure. We could have a stock table with stock attributes as follows, stock code, stock firm, stock price, stock quantity, stock dividend, and stock price to earnings ratio. These are attributes about stocks. Nation attributes would include nation name and the exchange rate for the nation. And so it is in fact possible to have both stock attributes and nation attributes in one table. This, however, creates some problem. Depicting the same problem could be between faculty and the courses these faculty teach in a school or a college. Let's take, for instance, a table of faculty in a department. Let's say this table has the following attributes. It has faculty ID. It has faculty name. And it has faculty position. And let's actually fill this table up with some dummy data. For instance, a faculty ID of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Faculty ID's name is Let's say we have four faculty members, Nick Shri, Marbu, M.K. Hube, Craig Piercy. Some sample data in there. These faculty have some positions, a lecturer, an associate professor, a senior lecturer, and a senior lecturer. Now, these faculty teach courses in the department, and we might be interested in having the information about the courses taught by these faculty members present in the table as well. So we can, to the same table, add some information about courses being taught, such as the CRN for the course, the name of the course, and let's say the size of the course. So let's say Nick Shri teaches a course in the department with CRN 2345 
the name of the course is data management and the size of the course is 40. Marbu teaches a course let's say 9876 called InfoSec information security and the size of the course is 40 as well. MK Hub teaches a course project management the size of the course is 40 and Crappy also teaches a course on programming with a size 40. Now, these faculty members don't just teach these courses, they might teach multiple courses for the department, for the college. Let's say Nick Shree teaches, in fact, another course in addition to 2345. Let's say he teaches the course 9276. And this is a course on systems development. Well, while we have information about the course in a separate row, we would need to, in fact, replicate information about Nikshri again. Let's say MK Hub teaches another course on BPM and has 40 students. So MK Hub also has their information replicated. So we start seeing when you have different types of data stored in the same table, data about faculty and also data about the courses that are taught by these faculty members present in the same table, we run into certain problems. The first problem is that some data is duplicated. We have duplicate pieces of data that are present in the table. And so we get a lot of redundancy. The second problem is, if I need to actually change something in the data, let's say I change the faculty position of Nikshri. For instance, instead of a lek, they are an associate professor now. Well, I would need to find all the places that this individual has a position and change that to associate professor. And so when I have to update data, that is problematic because again, I have duplicate data. Now let's say for instance, that one of the faculty members leaves the department. Let's say Krapai leaves the department. And so if they leave the department, we might actually want to get rid of that faculty member in the table. And as we delete that individual's data, we lose data about the course they have taught as well. And so that becomes problematic. When we think about data modeling, and the storage of data in tables, there are three issues that come up when we try to store data in one table. These are insert anomalies, delete anomalies, and update anomalies. Insert anomalies are created when we cannot insert data without having another piece of data about a different entity present. Delete anomalies are when we delete data, but we delete then unrelated data. Update anomalies is when our update process requires us to update multiple rows instead of just one row. To avoid these problems, when we store all the data in one entity, we actually start storing data in multiple entities or specifically two entities in this case. How do these two entities map to a relational database? Well, first of all, each entity becomes a table in the database. We know already that the entity name becomes the table name and each attribute becomes a column. Now, to relate these two tables together, what we need to do is we need to add a column to the many end of the one-to-many relationship. Please note that we are talking about the one-to-many relationship where a nation can have many stocks or a faculty member can teach many courses. 
And so a column is added to the many end of the relationship, in this case, to the stock table or to the course table. And what we do is we take the identifier or the primary key of the table on the one side of the relationship and add it to the table on the many side of the relationship. In the case of nation and stock, we take the primary key of nation, NAT code, and we create another column in stock. And in that column, we add data that corresponds to the primary key of nation NAT code. Since each stock belongs to a nation, the NAT code column in the stock table has information about which country or which nation that stock belongs to. Now, this is not done automatically. We have to do it. When data is actually inserted into the stock table, we need to be careful to specify which nation a stock potentially belongs to. NAT code in the stock table is actually referred to as a foreign key. A foreign key is a column in one table whose values much match the primary key in another table. So the NAT code in stock is a foreign key because it corresponds to NAT code, which is the primary key of nation. And NAT code in stock records information about the one-to-many relationship. Associated with foreign keys, you have the notion of referential integrity constraint. The referential integrity constraint is a constraint or a restriction on the potential values of a foreign key. What the referential integrity constraint states is that you cannot have a value of a foreign key if that value already doesn't exist as a primary key. Only pre-existing values of primary keys can be valid foreign keys. This is a referential integrity constraint and exists between two tables if those tables have a one-to-many relationship. We have seen that two tables can be related to each other using a one-to-many relationship. A one-to-many relationship is predicated on the primary key of one entity being used as a foreign key in the other entity. Before we move to creating tables and building a primary key foreign key relationship between those tables, we are going to first create a data model to represent two entities and this one to many relationship between two entities. To start off with, we open up MySQL Workbench and click on Data Models and click on the plus sign next to models. This allows us to create a brand new data model. Double clicking on add diagram creates a diagram in the environment and now we are in the data modeling window. One can zoom in to this window and I'm gonna do just that. We are going to work with the faculty and courses entities. These two entities are related with a one-to-many relationship. Faculty teach many courses and a course is taught by one faculty. We can take a note about that just so that we remember. And so if I click on the note, I can say what I'm thinking about. This text box captures the two entities and the relationships between these two entities. To start off with, we're going to start by representing the faculty entity. Clicking on place a new table allows us to place a new entity. So we're going to create the faculty entity. 
On an ad hoc basis, I'm going to come up with a couple of attributes of the entity. So I'm going to have a faculty ID. First name, last name, a department, phone number. Please note, for this faculty entity, faculty ID is the primary key, and we have a variety of other text attributes. I've left the defaults in place. Um, one doesn't necessarily need to leave the defaults in place. For instance, I could change phone number to something that's more reasonable, like 10 to 12 characters. Uh, I can change last name and first name to be more reasonable as well. I'm just leaving the defaults in place um, in a very ad hoc manner. In fact, I can be a little bit more specific. Say this is in fact 10 characters long. One can be more specific if one desires. Please note that faculty ID is the primary key and it's not null. The next entity we want to have is course. So again, click on place a new table and let's create a course entity. So three attributes for course, the CRN, the name of the course, and the enrollment. CRN being the course number, it's unique, and it's the primary, primary key for the course entity. And so we have two entities that we would like to relate to each other. They have a one-to-many relationship with each other. On the left-hand side of your screen, you are going to see these lines. Some of these are dashed lines and some of these are solid lines. What we are going to do is we are going to place one colon n dashed line. And so we're going to hover over place a new one colon n non-identifying relationship. We will discuss what non-identifying versus identifying means later on. Click on the dashed one colon n relationship. Notice at the bottom left of your screen, right down here where the cursor is, it says select the table to receive the foreign key. In this case, one faculty member is teaching many courses. So a faculty ID can show up many times in the course table as a foreign key. So the table to receive a foreign key is the course entity. The table that receives the foreign key is always on the many side of the relationship. And so we need to select the course entity and note again that the bottom left changes. It says course selected, please select the referenced table which table's primary key should be present in the course table as a foreign key. In our example, faculty ID in the faculty table should be that entity. We select faculty, we see a one-to-many relationship between these two entities. Please note, in course, we have faculty underscore faculty ID as a new column. This column has a data type integer, so it corresponds to the data type of the primary key. And this column is the foreign key that corresponds to the primary key in faculty. If we want to, we can actually change the name of that column. And so instead of calling it faculty underscore faculty ID, I can just leave it as faculty ID so that we know that this faculty ID in course is a foreign key that corresponds to the faculty ID in the faculty table. This is how we model a one-to-many relationship between two entities. This notation, please note, has a triangle, a tripod 
on the many side of the relationship. This is known as the crow's foot notation. The crow's foot notation represents a tripod or a crow's foot and it exists on the many side of the relationship of a one-to-many relationship. This re relationship read from the faculty side suggests that one faculty can have many courses or a faculty ID can be present multiple times in the course entity as a foreign key. From the course side, it suggests that a faculty ID in the course table is present only once in the faculty table. This is how we model one-to-many relationships in MySQL Workbench.